Good evening and welcome to the Citizens Forum. It's 6.30 p.m. on July 28, 2022. We do have uh, two, two people signed up to speak. Uh, you have three minutes to speak each. And whenever you come up, please state your name and address for the record. First, we have Kathy Tyson. Thank you very much. My name is Kathy Tyson. I live at 129 Sunward Drive here in Laverne. I apologize for reading this, but I have important things to say and I don't wanna miss anything. I wanna talk about tonight the importance of service to community and emphasize to everyone how important volunteer work is in order to have a thriving, friendly, and happy city. When I moved here in 03, I, I immediately started out as a Girl Scout leader. I was president of the PTO spent several years on the board of directors for the Tennessee Rehab Center in Murfreesboro. I eventually became a city employee, so my work focus shifted, um, but it was no less important. Um, working with a previous administration, we started the Christmas parade, built the playground at Lake Forest, we started the 4th of July celebration, courted and confirmed Walmart and other businesses. And I say we, because I'm only one of many people that you are that you see stepping up to help others. When people serve their community, they put their differences aside and focus on how to help neighbors, children, the elderly. Service to community is not about politics. It's not about one-upping someone you may or may not like. Service to community. It's so important that I actually teamed up with Deborah Balthrop and Melissa Joyner to start a foundation called the We Are Hope Foundation. It's a 501c3 group. We work with uh, Pastor Brenda Bryant, John and Jan Rutledge, Monty Cluster, Dr. Isaac, the veterinary, the veterinarian, and John Anderson. They're members of our board of directors. We've received support for our blessing boxes from several of our aldermen, and I want to acknowledge all of them. Graham, thank you so much for your support. Steve, thank you also for, for your help, and also you, Dennis, thank you for everything you've done. Every one of these people have shown compassion for the hungry. They've donated food and gift cards. They've attended our ribbon cutting events and we've all bowed our heads together to give thanks for having the ability to help some of our most vulnerable citizens. When we all come together in the spirit of community, our work is very similar to another organization in a neighboring state whose primary objective is to support needy charities and to stand ready to help citizens live a boundless life the commission of Kentucky Colonel is the highest title of honor bestowed by the governor of Kentucky. It is recognition of an individual's noteworthy accomplishments and outstanding service to the community, state, and nation. You may have heard some of the Kentucky Colonels that are out there, Muhammad Ali, Mario Andretti, Princess Anne, Fred Astaire, both uh, George Bush presidents, uh, Bill Clinton, Ronald Reagan, Jimmy Carter, Winston Churchill, George Clooney, Walt Disney, Bob Dylan, Duncan Hines, Bob Hope, the Judds, our own Dolly Parton here in Tennessee, Elvis Presley, and the um, fabulous Betty White. I'm here today to tell you, can I extend it just a hair? Just, we have grown by one person, the Kentucky Colonels. So it is my pleasure to introduce the newest member of the Kentucky Colonels. This man has promoted the ideals of Kentucky since he was a boy living in Hazard. If you know him, you know he loves the Kentucky Wildcats. He has volunteered as a football coach and as an announcer for our sports leagues in Laverne. He's an advocate for the senior members of our city and no one can ever deny his service to community. So right now I wanna say I was proud to nominate and to offer my congratulations to Laverne's uh, Kentucky Colonel, Steve No. May I may I approach the podium? Thank you. I happen to know what this means. A lot of people don't. Wow. Thank you. That's great. Good job, sir. Wait till I show this to them hillbillies. <laughs> <laughs> Next up we have Chuck Isbell. <laughs> Hello, I am uh, Chuck Isabel, live at 118 Oakmont here in Laverne. Congratulations, Steve. I guess I'll start calling you Colonel Mayor. 
or something along those lines. Uh, a lot of people know me, uh, and what, and some, some people don't, but I'm the uh, person working on trying to reduce the speed limit in Rutherford County at 25 miles an hour. And I've met with several people here. And since Laverne's my home, I feel like I should get a little bit more traction with people here in the city, you know, uh, the EMS police and stuff like that would help out. And I have a Facebook group for that. And um, when the minutes and every in the video for this is available more, I can post that link on there so people can join and see. The idea is just, you know, to protect children and to keep people from going through the nightmare that I went through. And, um, you know, Mayor Cole has been very helpful in this. And I, through this process and this being a political season, I think I've talked to everybody at least a few times. And so, anyway, I'd like to say thanks for your time and thank you. Thank you, sir. Moving on to our workshop, or yes, our workshop agenda. Um, the prayer Tuesday night will be by Colonel Vice Mayor No. <laughs> I will have Here the. Here we go. <laughs> yes, sir. I will have the Pledge of Allegiance. You should all have a copy of the. Uh, minutes from the July 5th regular meeting and the July 19th special meeting. We'll have departmental reports. Then we will have uh, Old Business Second Reading Ordinance 2022-16, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2021-2022 State Street Aid budget. Does anyone have any questions on this? And this is just a cleaning up the prior year's budget for additional paving costs. New, moving on to number four, ordinance 2022-17, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2021-2022 stormwater fund budget. Again, this is um, just cleaning up some of last year's budget. Does anyone have any questions? <clears throat> Moving on to the consent agenda, we have got, um, first off, approve city bids and purchases. And so, first off, we have got um, the bid for the Industrial Boulevard Sewer Expansion Project. And you should all have a letter from John in your packet. John, do you want to come up and speak? Good evening, everyone. Um, we opened our bids for the Industrial Boulevard Sewer Expansion Project Tuesday of this week. Uh, we had three bids that were, or three packages that were purchased, but only one bid was submitted. That bid was from the Norris Brothers Excavating LLC of Crossville, and that bid came in at $2,528,065. That was two and a half times more than what we had estimated. Um, our recommendation is that uh, you reject this bid and you, you know, re-advertise as soon as possible. You know, we, um, we reviewed the bids, of course, and the first item on there, and you might look in the letter, that um, there's one that is extremely high, and that was for the installation of the pump station itself. You know, for this particular project, we tried to speed things up by having the city purchase the pump station itself. So what this is, what this contractor was only having to do was install that pump station in a wet well. Um, we just think that that amount that he provided was extremely high. And John, we've had this uh, bidder come before us before when we've rejected some other bids. Um, and there were some poor recommendations, is that correct? Yes, sir. It, this was the contractor that was the low bidder for the Upper Cheney Woods project. Um, they did not come very well recommended, and, you know, based upon that as well, we, we would say to reject this bid. Does anyone uh, have any questions for John? How long did it get us, uh, how long did it take us to get to this point right here tonight with these bids? Oh. I'm not sure when we actually started, but maybe a year ago. Wow. The other two bidders that picked up papers, did they 
indicate, speak to anyone, any communication? No, I communicated with one of them quite a bit. I really thought that, you know, our communications, the questions that they were asking, that they were going to submit. But, you know, we've just seen that these contractors are very busy. There's lots of work out there. They're, they either don't want to do it or, um, or the time that we had on this one was a bit tight and maybe they didn't feel like they could meet it. And Alderman Coates, if you, just like we had our special meeting to discuss, you know, we, we were discussing the ARPA funds. Right. Well, that's statewide, so you think about how busy some of these groups are getting now with all of that money coming in and all the different projects groups are, do, are looking to do. So it's, it's definitely very competitive out there. So any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Number two, bid boom lift for Parks and Recreation Department. You should have the um, bids in your packet. Um, the low bid is $70,200. And so the, uh, the staff recommendation on that is to award the bid to that group, Evergreen Specialty Services. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, uh, is, is that boom lift, it's, it's not a truck, it's just a... Uh uh, a lift, right? The one that y'all usually rent to put up the Christmas decorations? That's correct. Okay. Any other questions? Number three, state contract purchase truck for the street department. Um, this was discussed at budget, and so um, this is a truck for that department. It's $51,048. Um, which is a little bit higher than originally expected uh, due to a price increase for last month. And this is through Ford of Murfreesboro. Does anyone have any questions? Is this some more of that going to have to wait for a long time to get it? Possibly. Mm -hmm. Possibly. Especially since it's Ford of Murfreesboro. Mike shaking his head. So. <laughs> Number four, state contract purchased two trucks for the sewer department. Um, again, this is budgeted item, uh, came back 60669 This is also through Ford of Murfreesboro. So before you ask, Colonel, yes, we will, have to, we will be waiting on these to, to get here. What kind of ETA do we know? Does anyone have any questions? Number five, state contract purchase truck for Parks and Recreation Department. And so this again is a truck for the Parks and Recreation Department, $47,351. And this is also through Ford of Murfreesboro on the state contract. Does anyone have any questions? David, is this replacing one or is this a whole new truck? It's not replacing one, it's, a, it's, it's just a new truck. Yes, sir. Okay. Number six, the NIPA contract purchase for in-car video system and computers for the uh, police vehicles. This is to authorize 10 Panasonic in-car radio, I'm sorry, in-car video recording systems and laptop computers for the police department vehicles. So this is $120,000. $262.69, um, and this is uh, this was authorized in the uh, budget. Is there any questions? Seeing none, we've got a sole source, large water meter testing and repair services. Um, this is um, basically for citywide meter testing for the commercial and industrial meters throughout the city. Um, our team goes around and checks some of the larger user ones each year, but um, this is going to be full scale, all commercial and industrial. And the estimated cost of work is $24,335. And again, this, is, this was approved in the budget. Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to sole source Fergus Road Pump Station maintenance. 
Um, this is just like it sounds. It's, it's maintenance on Fergus Road sewer pump station. Um, it operates with three sewer pumps and this is basically part of the needed scheduled maintenance. So um, the estimated cost for this right now is $60,107, which it is budgeted for. Uh, that price may fluctuate a little bit um, as they have to get in there and get fully inspected and see if there's anything that needs to be repaired with them. So if that happens, this will be brought, that, that, that information will be brought back to us. But does anyone have any questions? Okay, moving on to number nine. We've got sole source morpho ident fingerprint devices for the police department. Um, this captures individual fingerprints and submits that data packet um, on the uh, Laverne Police Department's workstation. So um, it's a Bluetooth connection and um, the, the city police department currently has three of these. Um, and so they were uh, grant funded for 15 more through the current budget. So, or they were granted uh, funding, but the, the total for the 15 units is $25,500. And so it's mobile fingerprinting. Do you want to have any questions? Uh, Chief, yes, uh, this is kind of getting off of the subject a little bit, but uh, does, does Laverne have body cameras? No, sir, not yet. N no, nobody's got body cameras? No, sir. These items, Chief, are they better than these trucks? They get here a lot quicker? Huh? Yes, sir, they'll be here. <laughs> Bruce, did you want to add something? Yeah. We <clears throat> Chip, you want to? Okay. Uh, we found out today we, we, uh, they're reviewing an addendum to the contract uh, provided by our legal team. Uh, they're still reviewing that. I don't know if it'll be ready for Tuesday night. Okay. So it's possible that we'll have to take this off of the agenda for Tuesday night if it's not ready to go and bring it back next month. Okay. Next up, we have um, the police department back end vehicle camera system upgrade. And um, this is uh, basically the, the current car video system um, is incompatible with some of the, the newer technology so this is upgrading the back-end technology um, they can upload footage worn by yes sir do you want to add something this upgrade also uh, puts us in compliant and compatible so when we do bring in body cameras we already have the infrastructure in place to to handle that capability <clears throat> and that's what i was just going to touch on is that th this is going to do the back-end uh, technology for body worn cameras. So, um, this upgrades other systems up to, to modern standards. So, um, this was authorized, um, in the budget. And so the total price is $9,394 dollars 60 Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to B approved contract with Lamar for old timers <coughs> day advertising. Um, this is billboard advertising for Old Timers Festival, and so um, it's twenty-one thousand. I'm sorry, twenty-one hundred dollars. Does anyone have any questions? <coughs> Moving on to C, approved contract with the Eagle Maniacs for an Old Timers Festival concert on September seventeenth, two thousand and twenty-two. Um, this is a Eagles tribute band. And it would play, they would play Saturday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Cost will be $5,500. There is no deposit. And this is, um, th there are funds available in the um, Old Timers Festival budget. Does anyone have any questions? If it's a washout, do they, there's no money, no foul? <laughs> Any other questions? God, last year. <clears throat> David, if you could just make sure the weather is clear for Old Timers Festival, I, we would appreciate it. I've already put that request into him, Mr. Mayor. He's got a plus, now we got a colonel in there. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, I'll get you for this. <laughs> it, it always rains on the second Saturday of September. Remember that. 
D, approve grant contract with the Tennessee Department of Environmental and Conservation for the 2020 Local Parks and Recreation uh, Fund City of Laverne Neighborhood Park Playground for Brookside Park. And this is, um, as it says, it's a TDEC uh, grant for or contract for that Brookside Park. Um, the estimated cost for the project is $403,753, and the city uh, budgeted a total of $205,000 in the current year budget. Does anyone have any questions? I know we just had the site plan go through planning commission, so it definitely looks to be a very uh, fun time for that, that area. Moving on to E, approve the renewal of the property and crime liability and workers' compensation insurance package for fiscal year 2022-2023 with public entity partners. This is our annual insurance renewal through PIP. Uh, does anyone have any questions about that? F, approve agreement with Richard Cohen for economic development services. This is our annual agreement with Richard Cohen, and this is for economic consulting services. Does anyone have any questions? G, approve professional services agreement with Navi Retail LLC for economic development services. Again, this is our annual contract with them. Is there any questions? Moving on to H, approve agreement with Placer Labs Incorporated for Economic Development Services. This is a new agreement for uh, Placer Labs um, to provide various economic services for the city. This includes um, <coughs> analytics, uh, demographics, various functions. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Moving on to I, approve contract with the Regional Transportation Authority for the provision of a regional bus service for the fiscal year 2022-2023 year. And this is our annual contract with the RTA. I think they got it to us right after our last meeting. So um, our cost share um, again this year is $9,000. Does anyone have any questions? Jay, approve change order number one to the charter place realignment project. And so um, this is an increase in cost uh, to the, of the original contract um, of $182,117.24. And um, basically it's a large portion of this is due to material delay. Um, the contractor is requesting to extend the contract time and establish a new completion date uh, for that. Does so anyone have any questions? What the... What's their date they're wanting to change to here? I'm trying to. They should be at the bottom of your summary. It's December 19th. And I will add that basically the December 19th would be for them to be complete with the entirety of the project, which there's repaving. They've got to remove the old road bed. They're going to have to in add some plantings, uh, install some trees and stuff or shrubs. Um, that's something they want to do in November as opposed to currently. Uh, right now, though, they, the delay was a strain pose. They've got the signal poles up now. They've got the signals up. Uh, they should have the intersection operational within the about, because they've still got some paving and striping to do, uh, have the intersection operational about a month, month and a half from now. It's just that to, to finish all the plantings, removal of the old road bed and the material there and stuff like that, that's, that's what would go all the way into December. But uh, they will, like I said, that that's, Intersection needs to be operational ASAP, and it's it's getting very close. I agree. I know I was over there <clears throat> the other day, and if you hit it around four o'clock, the traffic coming out of uh, uh, I call it New Paul Road area, it's massive. I mean, it seemed like half of Nashville's coming out of there. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not a good situation. Most of the time, it's, it's not much coming out. Yeah, that's due to the the warehouses over at Center Point. They pretty much have the same um, start and stop times, so um, everyone's leaving all at once, but um, that will be resolved. And then I know we've discussed at some of our planning retreats, eventually having some beautification done over there where the old roadbed, the old charter place roadbed um, is going to be removed at, 
So we can look at that later on. Yeah, when we when we've started this project, it the strain pose for the signals was a 10 month lead time. So that's that's what's caused the delay. Any other questions? Okay, moving on to uh, K, approve retirement enhancement for city employees with Mission Square. And so this is, uh, this is basically to propose uh, an enhancement to the current retirement programs offered by the city. And um, we currently offer three different programs for full-time employees. You can see the breakdown of everything. Um, and so the financial impact of this would be um, roughly $594,000 and um, enhanced benefits for our employees. Does anyone have any questions? Bruce, do you have anything? I'm just gonna add, that is if everybody fully, fully participates, yeah. which we don't know at this point exactly what that participation rate will be. Well, I would hope everyone would, would participate with retirement, but it's an individual choice. But does anyone have any questions? Should have all the materials in your packet. Next up, we have a pre proposal from Paylocity for an HR or for a human resource information system, HRIS system. And I um, think we have some representatives for the organization here. If y'all would like to come up and just kind of tell the board about your program, about what it does. Hi there, thank y'all so much for having us. I really appreciate y'all letting us be here. So Paylocity is a full-blown HRIS system. So it helps from rec the, what we call the hire to fire scenario. So all the way in, from the start of the employee's life in recruiting, uh, to onboarding, to payroll, to helping with participation in the retirement plan, uh, to also uh, notifying you know, lifetime achievements and stuff like that. It drives communication through your organization and streamline processes around payroll and HR. Anything you'd add to no, that? I think that's great. great. <laughs> I know he was he was very excited to come up. Yeah. I was. I was like, I got. This, this I, is, I know what we do. This is everything from from onboarding, payroll, timekeeping, performance management, records. Um, there, there, there's a bunch of different features with this. I know. Uh, Andrew and the HR team have spent a lot of time looking at this. Um, this would, if we did go with this program, um, looking at, at what we currently use and pay for, um, the city would see an additional annual savings of, pro of approximately $25,000 in programs that will be um, depreciated upon loss or upon launch. So does anyone have any questions about this? So if the city hires more employees, you can just add employees to the, the bundle and just increase mm -hmm. with the amount of people? Exactly, yep. So the more, the more the, as y'all grow and expand, there's a per employee per month charge that we've built into the system for you. And if you go the other way, it drops down as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank y'all. Next up, we have approved agreement with Target Solutions Learning LLC. Uh, DBA Victor Solutions and addendum to agreement for fire department training software. Um, this is just like it, it sounds. Um, Vector Solutions, they already provide uh, training software that uh, for both fire and emergency medical services. So um, this is just basically um, part of that contract. It's about $5,468. Nick, is there anything you want to add with this? No. What? What we're doing is our contract expired for the training portion of this, but we had in our contract through the end of next year for our scheduling and inventory software. And basically they're going to assume the contract for the training portion and drop the other part of it. We're still under contract. It's about the same price either way, but we were gonna keep the training software. So it's, it's a win-win for both of us. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, sir. And the last one, which is, this is one Michael and I had quite a few conversations on recently, and I'm very excited to hear about it, but this is a approve agreement with TDOT for the highway rail grade crossing improvement project on Stones River Road. And so 
Um, this would agreement would make highway rail grade improvements to the railroad crossing at Stones River Road. Um, it's adding asphalt, um, road <coughs> markings, new signs on both sides of the crossing. Um, the state will hire an engineering firm to um, to complete the bidding and project oversight. It's being funded by a federal grant. It's a 90-10 split for the city. So um, the project's a $57,355 uh, project. So our portion would be $5,735. Um, we talked this will slightly widen it and it will cushion a little bit if you ever come off of it coming from Old Nashville Highway. It's kind of a, a heavy bump there, so that will kind of fix that as well. But does anyone have any questions on this? Well, that lengthen it out to where it starts its descent and stuff before you get right to it. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, so there's supposed to be a little combiner, bring, it, bring the elevation up just a little bit, and then extend it 300 feet more. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll yeah. be good. Michael, is it going to come back as far as past what the Buchanan Road that turns off to the left? About right at Road. I know, I know, right in there is a low spot, and when it has a heavy rain, it it floods right in there. Yeah. It floods, but it probably ain't going to help that none. <coughs> That's a, right there at Buchanan. You know, yeah. uh, y'all have always had to put up cones or barricades because you know sometimes it gets. Uh, pretty deep right there. Okay, but it, it's had nothing to do with that. Okay. And will Bruce be a part of the getting them trains to not stop there for a long time? Absolutely. He'll be out there with uh, Danny's <coughs> and some flags. All right. Yep. <clears throat> Moving on to uh, new business. First reading ordinance 2022-19, an ordinance to amend the fee schedule regarding the sewer rates for the Blair Road sewer basin. Um, if you remember several years back, the city of Laverne uh, partnered with Smyrna to provide sewer services for the Blair Road drainage basin. They did increase their uh, sewage fees. And so um, this is to basically match that on our side so that we're billing um, correctly. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Moving on to seven, resolution 2022-18, a resolution of the City of Laverne Board of Mayor and Aldermen to declare property owned by the city to be surplus to the city's needs and directing disposal of the same. You should be able to see everything in your packet. Looks like a Chevy Tahoe, a couple items from Public Works, and uh, the water treatment plant. Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to resolution 2022-19, a resolution authorizing the city of Laverne to participate in the public entity partners, safety partners matching grant program. Um, this resolution just authorizes the city to enter into the PIP safety partners grant program, which is a 50-50 um, grant. It provides 50% reimbursement uh, for city funds and um, it's Basically, it's aimed at um, reducing work injuries and accidents. So um, this year, the water department's requesting some items with this, such as 30 orange traffic cones, uh, 10 tripods, 25 white hard hats, 55 high visibility uh, class two t-shirts, 50 class two um, high visibility vests, two full body harnesses, and two six foot lanyards. So uh, the city's portion of this should be um, just under $1,500. Does anyone have any questions? That's good stuff. Next we have resolution 2022-20, a resolution to amend the employee handbook. And there is quite a bit with this. Um, should have it all in your packet, but... Um, it, it adds different provisions such as um, employees may resign with written notice uh, stating the reason and effective date to human resources with a minimum of 14 days. Um, sets uh, per diem rates, um, city vehicles, um, usage, driving records, various items here. Does anyone have any questions? 
Seeing none, we're moving on to appoint and remove committee members. First, we have the beer board. We have one vacancy. Mr. Raymond Healy has resigned, yeah. uh, and he is moving out of the city, so we have one vacancy there. Um, we don't have any applicants yet. I was notified today one person would be applying, so uh, as long as that's in by uh, noon on Monday, we should be able to get that added to the agenda. But if you would like to apply, the application is on the city website. I know we're advertising this on social media and channel three. So get your application in by Monday at noon and you'll be on the agenda. The other vacancy we have is um, the Industrial Development Board. Again, Ray Healy has resigned um, with him moving. We do have one applicant and that is Brent Turner. And um, if we get any other applications between Monday or between now and noon on Monday, we'll add those to the, um, the list here. And with that, that is everything. We're on to uh, Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman Waldron. I've got a lot of inquiries this week about the, the blasting deal over there at Woodland Hills. It, it's coming from Sanders Knob. And uh, uh, I might let Randolph talk about it, but blasting, I think, is done strictly by the state. The city of Laverne has very little to do with, with, with anybody blasting. Am I right, Randolph? Yes, sir. The um, requirements that, that I am, this, as the city, is responsible just to make sure that those that work in this city are licensed, their credentials are up to date, insurances and forms and whatnot that we have on record so that if something like this were to occur, we can immediately jump on. I think when Ann reached out to me, I gave her three possibilities of whom it may be that caused the, the blast. And of course, Curtis confirmed that after they went out and looked at it and Ann was able to get the information she needed. So yeah. Well, if anybody has any question about that, they need to call the state. Well, they can call me. I'm glad to help them out. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't just say just call the state, but if they've got questions, they can always, obviously call here. I can share with them a link to the um, state fire marshal's office to file that complaint with the state fire marshal, and, and once done, they, they, they walk that through. I know I know. it was, it was on the news. <coughs> Anytime something on the news, you know, people have curiosity, even if they don't live in that area. But well, something like that's a big deal. You know, but it's a, it, we've had over the years we've had problems like over there by Panatonia, over there by Ajax Turner. That area there had had some last a few 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 years back, and and it and Laverne just don't 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 handle blasts. Well, well let me say this: in my ten years here, this is the first time that there's been a shot gotten gotten away that I've been made aware of that that's 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 gone to the extent that this went. Thank you. Yes, sir. When the dog days of summer, make sure your pets has got amper, amper uh, uh, water and shade. Uh, check on the elderly and uh, keep the Montgomery family in, in, in your prayer. They, they had a loss and uh, 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 just, just keep the Montgomery family in the prayers and thank you. Thank you. Alderman Coates. I say congratulations, Vice Mayor No, for your, your new position or your new title, shall I say. That's all I had, Mr. Mayor. Colonel No. Uh, thank you. Kathy called me a while back, wanted to know when my birthday was. I, very random question. I didn't know why. I just gave it to her. But uh, And it has nothing to do with this board, but being from Kentucky, I happen to know the true meaning of being a Kentucky Colonel and what that uh, means. And, and I do appreciate that a lot. So uh, that's all I got. You can let that go. <laughs> so uh, we have got the dog park opening next month. And uh, if you've been seeing some of the photos of that, it looks absolutely amazing out there. We've still got a little bit of uh, seed and strawing and uh, we should have a, a grand opening for that next month. It should be a, a wonderful time for that and give uh, people opportunity to be able to let their, their dogs run in a very large area. So um, that, that's gonna be a wonderful thing. Uh, 
just like uh, Alderman Waldron, I did get uh, several phone calls and visits about um, the blasting over at uh, High Tower or High Point 24. Um, I know I've spoken with Assistant Commissioner Gary Farley. They are working on an investigation report, and uh, he said he would definitely get me the results of that afterwards. So uh, once I have that, I'll be glad to put that out there for the public. They can see and uh, speak with uh, the state about any of those concerns. We definitely want to provide any assistance. I know our police department um, went actually above and beyond. They went door to door over on Laurel Ledge, checking on uh, individuals' homes to make sure that, number one, people were okay and safe, and then um, assist them with any police reports. I know the fire department was out there. Codes has been all over it fielding questions, so um, great teamwork, guys. We very much appreciate y'all for this. Um, want to touch on one other thing, which was a pretty fun event, and I know uh, the vice mayor was there at it, but uh, our senior center just had Christmas in July, and uh, it was a very big, fun event. Um, lots of singing and um, lots of merriment, which is a great thing to see, even if it's outside of the, the usual Christmas time. So uh, they had a lot of fun down there, heard a lot of good things from people on that. So with that, I'll call this meeting adjourned.